kind of a commission question again back to kind of commissions is you know sure. we were talking about you know we have seasons uh we have seasons so there's seasons like right now where it's rainy and we're expecting storms and so we get work for like four weeks and then we have nothing for like eight you know eight months and then we have a big storm again yep and then on the commissions you know guys are they're expecting let's just say we're talking about 30 percent of the profits okay yeah so but like repair we do repair work too so repair work is 500 to 1500 dollars per house as opposed to ten thousand dollars for a reroad right. so what do you what do you do with people like that what do you do with your sales people that you know because they're not our sales guys are not going to want to just go after the 500 hundred dollar jobs even when we have 20 of them a week kind of thing. i don't know does that make any sense to you i don't know if that makes any sense why what wouldn't they want to why wouldn't they want to go after the little jobs that they have that many of them if, if there are that many of them, I don't know if there are that many of them. We've, we, we, yeah. So, um, you know, I guess so. I guess I just, you know, in my mind's eye, if I can go after three or four ten thousand dollar jobs instead of twenty five hundred dollar jobs, I guess which ones I'm gonna do, you know? So. Yeah, that's but. Kind of my thinking. I don't really know why they pick and choose. Like for the salesman, it's not that much work either way. You know what I mean? Like. And whether they're going to make a sales pitch about a $10,000 job, that's probably going to take more convincing and time for that commission than if they've got a repair, somebody calls and goes, my roof is leaking. I need this done. That's like a slam dunk. They go over, they look at it, they get a contract signed. Even if they're not making a ton of money, if it takes them two hours, all that's said and done to go and close a $1,000 deal, and then they make, you know, even just 250 bucks, that's still $125 an hour. Like... That that's an attitude adjustment that the sales guys would need to make. It's like I took jobs big and small. Of course, there are going to be jobs like when I was working, and I'd go, "This woman is a nightmare, and I don't want to do a job that I'm not going to make thirty five hundred dollars on for her." You know, there's definitely situations like that, but there's going to be jobs big and small. You know, sometimes when I sold Cutco, I would go and spend two hours at someone's house, and they'd buy a forty five dollar tomato knife, which means that in all that time, I made twenty two dollars. Right. But I knew that with that, that lady might send me to somebody who buys a thousand dollar set of knives or five hundred dollars. Right. So you have to just it's really a mindset thing. And the culture at your company has to be you guys, we want to just have as many opportunities with as many homeowners as possible, because this customer might only have a five hundred dollar repair, but their next door neighbor might might see it and you get a ten thousand dollar roof out of it. So we want to be exposing exactly. ourselves to as many people as yeah. possible. Right. And by the way, one other thing I'd like to add to that, and this is something else with culture at your company, is the, the attitude should be make hay while the sun's shining and then don't live like an asshole. And what I mean by that is if for half the year the sun's shining, you guys can roof all day long and these guys are just killing it. They're making tons of jobs or they're making a lot of commissions that should carry them through the winter. You know, storm restoration sales, think about Minneapolis, Minnesota. They get a ton of hail, but they also have like four or five months of frigid winter with five feet of snow. So it's not like those guys are like, well, we just can't do it up here and we're dropping like flies. They make, they make hay while the sun's shining. They've got a good honey pot to, to, you know, they can hibernate through the winter if they need to. Um, your guys can do the same thing, but that you have to teach them also like manage your money guys, be prepared for that dead time because you've got to get fat and happy in the summer to last you through the winter. If it's slow or if it's raining or whatever the case may be. And don't go out and buy yourself a Ford F two fifty and then a brand new TV and uh, go to Vegas and gamble away 10 grand because then you're broke in the winter and you have to go take a job at a restaurant somewhere. That's your bad. That's not the the problem with the industry. No, you're you're. I actually am going to copy verbatim your. Uh, well, no, I'm, I mean, I'll, I guess I guess was it what you wrote about that finance part that was pretty good in your uh, diamonds in the sky. So, yeah. yeah. And Jeff just bought a four two fifty, so you just defended them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love uh, an F, I love a Ford F two fifty, but can you afford it? Buy it. <laughs> But don't don't make fifty grand over the summer and then act live like you just made a hundred. You know that's what we have to teach right. these sales guys. Yes, oh, 